everybody. It's good to see you. Uh, we're a minute or two late starting. Um, we, we have quite a lot of gremlins in our system and we've been trying to cure them this morning. So uh, it's good to see you all here. And uh, the Lord is good all the time. The Lord is good. Amen. It's good to see you who are joining us also on the live stream. I uh, hope and pray that uh, God blesses you and speaks to you through our service today. Our service this morning is going to be all age. Uh, we're trying this for the first time, really, since uh, COVID began a year and a half ago. And our children will be staying in all the time, apart from the Upper Discoverer group, which is 13 years and above. And uh, Isaac is going to take those... Uh, folk upstairs uh, into the room upstairs for their session. We don't have an official crèche running at the moment still, but uh, if, if you have a problem and you're embarrassed by your child or they need feeding or something like that, the lounges at the end of the corridor are open and you can at least feel relaxed in there. Um, we're doing a kind of belt and braces job week on, week on. It's lovely to see people coming back. We may not have so many today because of petrol. Uh, some people have said that uh, petrol is hard to find at the moment and they aren't able to get here today. They normally come by car. <laughs> oh, we have uh, Ingrid. Uh, Jackie, that's Esther's mum's sister, is visiting from the USA. I did speak to you last week, didn't I? Where are you? Hiya. Hiya, Jackie. Hiya. It's good to see you here. Welcome. It's good to have visitors here. Send our love back to the States when you go back. Or if you want to stay here permanently and join our church, it'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, some notices as well. Um, deacons, are, we are coming up to the time when we have to nominate deacons. If you're a member of our church officially, uh, we need to nominate some deacons in November. But as preparation for that, out in the foyer on the notice board is a list of people eligible to be nominated for deacon. But if you feel after you've prayed about it and you think someone is of the right character and gifting, you approach them and you ask if they're willing to be nominated. Fill in one of these forms and send it back to the office and uh, that will prepare us for some new deacons. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to be having our harvest display. That should be another interesting uh, foray into... <laughs> what we haven't done for a long time. Um, so we are going to have a display. If you're passing the church during the week and you want to bring some non-perishable goods, drop them in at the office. That would be fantastic. We want a nice big display because we give half to our feeding program here at the church and half to Mill Grove Children's Home every year, and they all need our support. So if you can bring anything, if that fails, you can always bring it next Sunday with you and a deacon will take it off you, we'll add it to display. So that's harvest next week, the 3rd of October. Uh, also at harvest we have uh, Operation Agri and we normally give uh, funding to that because that's one of our Baptist projects and uh, there are envelopes I think at the back if you'd like to take one of those and bring them back next week to really encourage uh, that work. Uh, shoe boxes in November, we'll be sending off some real shoe boxes this year. Last year we had to do it online and just donate the money. This year we're actually filling shoe boxes again, which is very exciting. And near the time we'll show you some videos of children receiving those boxes in many different countries of the world. <coughs> but if you want to take one of those, we've got more that we can bring out later. But please read the instruction sheet. Some things aren't allowed this year. So please uh, read the sheet before you start filling your box. And they need to be back in early November. So that's lots of notices today. A final notice is please pray for Josh Williams, who is traveling to Jamaica 
tomorrow, all being well, for his mother's funeral. And uh, it's been a very difficult time for them because of trying to make travel arrangements with COVID. So please pray that all will go well. And he'll be there for probably five, five weeks. So uh, do pray for them. Let's just be quiet for a moment and then we're going to share our call to worship. So let's be quiet and then I'm going to ask William to bring up our call to worship. Shall we stand together? Let's read our call to worship together. It's Psalm 3 and it's called The Shield Around Me. I'm sick of hearing it. I get it at school and at home and on TV and on the internet. People saying, don't be stupid. You're dumb to believe in God. I know they are wrong. I know that you are real, God. You are strong and solid under my feet. You fill my heart up to the top with love. You hear my voice and answer me. When I feel down, you lift up my head. When I am tired, I curl up and rest safe in you. Hey world, I'm not afraid of you. Say what you like. Think what you like. I know who I am. I belong to Jesus Christ. I belong to the Father of all. I belong to the Holy Spirit. My blessing, my shield, my glory. Amen. Amen. Remain standing. Heavenly Father, we thank you that despite all the gremlins that the enemy sends, despite the petrol shortage, despite the electrics going wrong, despite all those things, you want us to focus on you and realise that you are here with us this morning in this place. We welcome you. Holy Spirit, come and work. We thank you for bringing our children to us this morning, <coughs> despite all those problems of getting here. Lord, we pray that they will lift our hearts as they contribute to our service today. And Lord, fill our hearts afresh, we pray, as we give thanks to you for your love and the sacrifice of your son who came to this earth to bring us back into that relationship with you. We praise you. And Lord, we ask that you might move upon our nation and move in power, <coughs> Lord, to call people back to living right with you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, we long to move in power. We'll sing this together. Thank you, William. Oh 
Amen. That's our prayer, isn't it? That God will revisit our nation, will revisit the United States, will revisit all the nations that we represent here, and that God will rule and reign in his world, and we will come under that rule gladly and willingly and worship him, not just with our words, but our lives as well. So, amen. Please do sit down. And I'm going to invite uh, Ingrid to come. Is she here? Yes, and she's going to present some Bibles to us, so I'll leave it in your hands. Thank you, Pastor Stephen. Good morning, church. How are we? I was a little bit late this morning, I have to be honest. Petrol is going crazy. So uh, I was going round and round Edmonton trying to get here. Luckily, I know Edmonton well, so (laughs) I finally got here this morning. So anyway, um, you know why I'm here. Um, I'm actually here to present um, some Bibles to our young people. But first of all, I want to just say how important it is for our young people and our young children to actually come to Sunday school. Um, It's just the Word of God actually sows a seed. And when that seed is planted in that young person, it will be with them for the rest of their lives. And I know how many of you, hands up how many of you went to Sunday school when you were little. I mean, that is the majority of you, right? Because I remember when I went to Sunday school, every Sunday morning, we had to get in. Sometimes we'd get into the church van. I grew up just in Arna's Grove there. And so a lot of my friends, if they saw me on a Sunday morning, they knew that they couldn't play with me because I was going to church. And sometimes they loved me so much that they asked their parents if they could come with me. So they would get into our cars or come into the church van with us and go to church. That's how important it is. So it doesn't matter whether you're a believer or not. Just finding that the young people actually find out for themselves who God is. And it actually says statistically, a child or young person who attends a Sunday school will stay within a church or a church environment, or they are more likely to return back in their adult life. So it's really that important. Um, So if we can all just do a little bit of evangelism, we've all been locked down for so long, So what we need to do is to encourage our own children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, cousins, whatever it is, friends, godchildren, we need to actually encourage them to come back and to, you know, just come back into the house of God and let them learn the word for themselves so that that can actually encourage them. And so I just want to say um, that, you know, the, the Sunday school team, Elizabeth, Martella and myself, we're just so happy just to see their faces, you know. Like, they're just so happy to be back, just to learn the Word of God. And a couple of weeks ago, we was actually doing a recap. We was actually doing some quizzes for the children. And I have to tell you, parents, guardians, you should be proud of your children because they know the Word of God, okay? Anyway, <laughs> the real reason that I'm here, I'm going to present some um, youth Bibles to our children And these children, um, some of them actually received their Bibles already during the lockdown. But, you know, they've actually left primary school. They've now gone up to secondary school. So they've actually left my group, which is Adventurers, and they've now gone up to Elizabeth's group in Lower Discoveries. And it is tradition that they are presented with their own youth Bible. So as I call you up, if you could please make your way up to the stage. Um, We have, and because I know you all, I'm going to just say your first names, first name basis. Angel, if Angel was here, if Angel could come up. Just stand there, Angel. Um, We have Jordan. I don't know if Jordan is here. Come up, Jordan. You're all at the front, which is good. Um, We have Kobe. Is Kobe here? Kobe's not here today. Okay, we'll save his Bible for him. Um, We have Frederick, or Freddie, should I say? Come up, (laughs) Freddie. Um, Jonathan, is Jonathan here? Come along, Jonathan. <laughs> Come along. Um, we have Nikan. Is Nikan here? Nikan's not here? Okay, we'll save Nikan's Bible as well. And finally, I don't know if Leora's here. Is Leora here? She's not here? She is here. Good. Leora, if you could just stand here for me. I'm not going to embarrass you too much. But you see, Leora is the daughter of Nadine, who was our deacon. And Leora was so keen to have a youth Bible during the lockdown that she's already received it. But (laughs) she's still up here to be recognized, aren't you, Leora? 
Um, so I'm just going to ask all of you um, what years you're in now, so everybody can know. I'm not going to ask your age, but you can just say what years you're in. What year are you in now? Year eight. Year eight. And Angel? Year eight. Year eight. Jordan? Year eight, year eight as well? Year seven. Year seven? And year seven. So can we just give all of these young people a round of applause? And um, if you could all just say, all your Bibles are on there. Because of COVID, I'm not actually going to hand them to you. So if you could actually just go to the tables and collect them. Your name should be on them now. And then just hold them. Can you see them? I think you've already got yours, Leora, haven't you? Did you get yours? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so if we could just take a moment just to pray for these young people here. If we just close our hearts our eyes and bow our heads. Dear Father God, we thank you for these young people with us, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to direct them in their lives. We pray, Lord, that the Bible will actually teach them your word. We pray, Lord, that you will give them correction, Lord, Father. We pray, Lord, that they will be able to preach the gospel, Father, wherever they go. And we pray, Lord, that your light will shine on them, Lord. Be with them now and forever. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. And if we can just give them another round of applause. And this is, this is what we learnt at Bible school. This is what we learnt at Sunday school. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible. Amen. Thank you. So on, off you go. <laughs> Thank you, Ingrid. Thank you for uh, doing that for us. And what a lovely call to bring the children to faith in Christ. And... Uh, we know also Penny has been working very hard these last few weeks for us as well. Uh, she loves the children. Uh, so praise the Lord. We're going to sing a song now because we're, we've got children in and we've got young people in today. And we're going to sing a song that we haven't done for a long while, one of our signing songs. So in a moment I'm going to ask you to stand, but I'm going to show you the signing thing to do first, okay? So are you listening very carefully? As I shall say this only once, okay? Are you ready? It's wonderful Lord, right? Wonderful God, you are my shield, my protector. I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, because you are near. I can lie down and sleep in peace. Have you all got that? <laughs> right. Uh, now, there's a man going to be doing it on the screen for you. So if you do forget, or if I forget, he's there to, to help us to see what's going on. So would you like to stand? Thank you, William. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, you are my shield, my protector. I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, cause you are near. I can lie down and sleep in peace. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, you are my shield, my protector. I can lie down, go up to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, cause you are near, I can lie down and sleep.
Beautiful song, isn't it? Shall we sit down? And uh, now the Upper Discoverers, that's 13 years and above. They're going to go out to their session separately. Uh, over 13. Any Upper Discoverers? Over 13? Uh, any Upper Discoverers? If you have to take part in the presentation and you're over 13, you can always go up to the session later. So... Okay. Now, one of our children, I'm not sure which one it is today, is going to lead us in our prayers. So who's going to be doing that today? Leora, thank you very much. Let's uh, prepare our hearts as we turn to the Lord in prayer. Good morning, church. Let us pray. Lord, I bring into your hands the island of La Palma, who are having to evacuate their homes due to the intensifying volcanic explosions. I pray you guide them to safety and watch over them during this time. Jesus Christ, these past 18 months have been very hard on everyone. God, I want to place all those who have contracted COVID or have a family member who has. I pray you put your healing hand on them. During the pandemic, lives were lost. I pray that anyone grieving the loss of a loved one shall find comfort and a mended heart in Jesus' name. Last week, a young teacher, Sabina Nessa, lost her life. Lord, comfort her family and bring justice. I pray you keep all people safe on the road. I bring Afghanistan to your throne of grace as the Taliban has taken over. Give them shelter and lead them to safety. Protect the families of those who were left behind. Give them peace of mind. I bring Edmonton Church into your hands. I pray our church members who make I pray for our church members who make church so memorable. I pray for our leaders, deacons and minister who show us the way. I pray for the tech people who make the Facebook live services happen. I pray that the children and I learn about God's grace, mercy, and everlasting love. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Thank you so much. And now uh, we're going to have our children's presentation. So if we could mute this channel for, me for a second. Is this working? Is it working? Sound desk, is this working? Thank you, great. Just as very quickly, just a quick introduction, quick introduction. Uh, this is Amos in 21st century England. Thank you. Amos, where are you? Here I am. Amos, my heart is breaking. My people are running away from me, but they think they are running towards me. They have not listened to a thing I have told them. I need you to go and speak to them for me. Me? 
but I haven't been to Bible school. I am not rich. I haven't been educated. I don't have a degree. I'm a nobody. I am only a shepherd. No, Amos. You are the best person to speak for me. We have a good relationship, and you know what is on my heart. I trust you to speak my heart to my people. Okay, what do you want me to say? Please remind them of my words and teachings, and then give them a new message. This is the message I would like you to give them. Do what is good and run from evil, so that you may live. Then the Lord Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Okay, do what is good and run from evil, so that you may live. Then the Lord Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Perfect. Come with me. Have a look at what's going on. And these two youngsters come from a family that believe in me. Let's go to the park after school. I know your mum told you to go straight home and not go to the park after school, but she won't know. Come with me. Tell her you had detention. I have been banned from going there. The police are there. It's dangerous. My parents will be very angry. They will take away my phone. They won't know. Come with me. Tell your parents you had a detention. Speak to these young people for me, please, Amos. The youth are the next generation, and they are turning away from you. Okay. Young lady, you should know better. You know the Bible verse, honor your father and mother. Then you will live a long, full life in the land of the Lord your God is giving you. So why are you trying to persuade someone else to disobey their parents? Parents can't tell us what to do. This is England. Children have rights. We can do what we want. One of my friends told social services that his parents were too strict, and now he lives with a foster family. He is now free to go where he, where he wants to go and, do, and to do what he likes. I have a message for you from Father God. Do what is good and run from evil, so that you may live. Then the Lord Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. That's true. You are doing what is bad and running towards evil. I choose to listen to this message from God. I'm going home, so should you. Well, see you tomorrow. I'm off to the park to for, I'm off to the park for some fun. You have made the right choice. God will be with you. Can you make my friend go home? Many gangs meet up in the park and it's dangerous. I am sorry. I cannot make your friend do anything. He has been given free will by God and he can choose she can listen she can choose to listen to God or she can ignore him. Go home quickly and continue to obey your parents. God will be watching over you. Everywhere, people are turning away from me. Listen to this. Are you sure, Pastor? Is it really okay? Yes, I'm sure. You don't have to believe that, that part in the Bible. This is no longer important. The law has changed now anyway. Do you see what I mean? My people are being led astray. Please go and speak to these two. Okay, I will do as you say. Excuse me, I overheard your conversation. Yes? God's people cannot pick the, and choose which section of the Bible to believe. If you want to be in good in God's eyes, you must obey everything he says. Remember, and the Lord has declared today that you are people for his treasured possessions, and he has promised you that you are to keep all of his commandments. God has asked me to pass on a new message to you. Do what is good and run from evil, so that you may live. And the Lord Almighty will be watching you, just as you say he is. Who are you to pretend that you can hear from God? I have been to Bible school. My church has a thousand members. Come to my church if you want to hear from God. Don't worry, I believe you, Pastor. Father God, I tried. Keep trying. My people are precious to me. I don't want any of them to perish. Listen to this mother and daughter. What do you think of this Buddha ornament? It would look very good in the front porch. Which color do you prefer? I like the gray one. But what's so bad about the other? Please, Amos, remind them of my words. But what's so bad about these little Buddhas? Just like the Israelites did, my people are listening to what people around them are saying. The world says that Buddha statues are supposed to bring peace, serenity, positive energy, happiness, health and wealth. My people should turn to me for all of this. Instead, they are turning to statues. They don't realize that they are worshipping false gods. I will do as you say. Hello, who are you? How did you get here? I have been sent from, by God to remind you of his commandments. Do 
Do not turn to idols, and you must not make it for yourselves gods of cast metal. I am the Lord your God. Well, I'm not worshipping this statue. There's nothing wrong with it. Everybody has one. I don't believe you. Father God, I tried, but they won't listen. Can I go home now? Not yet, Amos. This world is heading for disaster if they don't return to me. Listen to these two. And did you hear what she said next? No, tell me! Gossip? Oh no. Hello, ladies. They remind you of a commandment given to us by God, Father God. I never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth. But instead, let your words become beautiful gifts that encourage others. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. God has also asked me to pass on this message to you. Do what is good and run from evil, so that you may live. The Lord Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Oh, okay. I should be getting up now. Bye, Dory. <laughs> Father God, at least they listen. Can I go home now? Yes, Amos. Thank you for being obedient to me. You were not always welcomed or believed, but you obeyed me. My people can never say that I didn't try to warn them or keep them out of harm's way. I love them and only want what's best for them. My advice is simple. Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Then the Lord Almighty will be with you just as you say he is. When I created mankind, I did not create them to die. I created them to live. Today I've reminded them of that choice. Amen. Let's, uh, let's give them another clap, a fantastic. <laughs> Nathan makes a surprisingly um, good God, actually, doesn't he? He's got that kind of, you, you, you should kind of tremble a bit, but well done, everybody. And Penny also, we thank Penny for writing that script based on those verses in Amos, which we're going to look at in a moment. I think one of our children now is going to read uh, the actual verses concerned. I'm not sure who that's going to be. Yep, you've got it all ready, have you? Well done. Good morning, church. Today's Bible reading, we're going to be reading from Amos chapter 5, verses 14 to 15. Make it your aim to do what is right, not what is evil, so you may live. Then the Lord Almighty really will be with you as he claim he is. Hate is what is evil, love is what is right, and see justice prevails in the courts. Perhaps the Lord will be merciful to people of his nation who are still alive. Absolutely brilliant reading. Thank you so much. Uh, we're very blessed, aren't we, that our children are coming back now and we're hearing from them. And uh, we're looking at uh, the minor prophets. And we remember we said uh, they're not uh, the minor prophets because they're not so important as the other ones. There are 12 prophets in the Old Testament who uh, preached either for a shorter time or uh, they didn't preach so many sermons as some of the other prophets. So today we've got these uh, verses that we've just heard read. Seek good, not evil, that you may live. Then the Lord God Almighty will be with you just as you say he is. Hate evil, love good, maintain justice in the courts. Perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy on this nation. That's a wonderfully challenging few verses, isn't it? Now, was anyone here born in a small village? Anyone here born in a small village? 
Joyce Lynn, back in Jamaica, was it? Very good, okay. Anyone else born in a small bit? Marcella? Back in Jamaica. <laughs> back in Jamaica. <laughs> Anyone else born? Winklet? Back in Jamaica, yes. Yeah? In? In the Philippines. Brilliant. We had some wonderful friends from the Philippines, didn't we? They came to live with us for about a year, and they used to cook our meals in the evening. Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> so we praise God. So you know what it's like to come from a small village then? Well, Amos was from a small village called Tekoa. You'll probably go home and you'll have forgotten that already, but uh, he came from a small village, and the Bible says, you've already heard this, he was a shepherd. So it was amazing that God chose a shepherd to do this amazingly important thing. It also says he was a dresser of sycamores. And, you know, despite all the clever people who have been to Bible college, like you were saying, um, no one seems to know what on earth that means because there weren't any sycamores anywhere near where, where Amos was a prophet. So we don't know what the dresser of sycamores really means. If you do know that, please send your answers on a postcard and I'll, I'll be interested to hear. But it says he was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. And although he came from small beginnings and he wasn't educated at Bible college or like we hear and so on, God gave him this amazingly important thing to do. <coughs> God gave him this life and death message to pass on to all God's people at the time in the northern kingdom of Israel. Why was that? Well, I hope you've already heard the sermon preached once because everything was in there that Penny wrote in there and I'm just going to strengthen it a little bit because it, I'm the minister and ministers always speak when they've got a chance to, don't they? So, <laughs> but they've really told you the answer to this question. Why? Why did God give them this amazing message? Because at that time, although they claimed to be God's special people, they were not taking much notice of God and they were doing lots of bad stuff, weren't they? And we heard the children explain some, through some scenes how some people listened to Amos and took the warning from God. Other people weren't interested and carrying, carried on doing the bad stuff. But it was a time of great prosperity, first of all. Um, people, some people were getting very rich. And I say some people because only a few of them were getting very rich and they were able to build big houses. Some of them even had summer houses as well as ordinary houses. And uh, they were built of posh stone, you know, and they stood out compared to other people's houses. And some of them were decorated inside with amazing furniture. I don't know if you've ever been... Have you ever watched those programmes on the television... Uh, where they buy houses, you know? Uh, location, location, location. There was one we kind of watched for a few minutes the other day, and this couple, fairly young couple, was saying uh, they went into this house with seven bedrooms, five bathrooms, massive garden, and they said, no, it's not really quite to our taste. And how much is it? Oh, it's 975000 and you think, oh, they're turning that down. And, you know, they go into some of these houses and they say, oh, I don't like the colour of the kitchen cabinets. We'll have to rip that out. I think, I'd die for a kitchen like that. <laughs> so they had these amazing houses with amazing furniture and they were really getting rich. It was a time of prosperity. And they had furniture decorated with ivory. You're not allowed to do that anymore because ivory is banned. But... Ivory was very expensive. And the furniture was made of silk that came from oh, the far east. Very, very expensive. But how did they get rich is the question. Because people can get rich lots of different ways, can't they? And some of the ways people get rich are bad ways. I'm sure you could tell me some of those ways. But these people got rich by taking bribes. Do you know what that means? Yeah, what is, what is it then, Fred, Frederick? When someone takes a bribe? That's right, a bribe is something you give somebody to convince them to do something you want them to do. 
That's a very good explanation. You're going to be writing the next Oxford Dictionary as you get up. And these people were getting rich because they were taking bribes. They were taking bribes. I'll tell you a funny story, shall I? When I went to Living Waters in Tanzania once, uh, we weren't getting much joy from the local council as we were trying to have our new school endorsed so that we could have pupils from the area come to our school. So uh, an African colleague said to us, well, what you need to do is invite them to the house and give them chai, which is tea. So we thought, oh, that's easy. So we thought, no, we're not going to be mean and just give them a cup of tea. We're going to give them some food as well. So we invited the council officials. They came up to the house and we gave them chai tea. And then we gave them this lovely meal. And we said, it's lovely to see you and so on. And so they went away. They were all grumpy. I thought, well, why are they so grumpy? We, we didn't just give them tea. We gave them a lovely meal as well. And then another African said to us, you silly people, chai means taking a bribe in Tanzania. And they were expecting you to give them money. If, they, if you give them money, then they'll, they'll open you, let you open your school. Well, we refused to do bribes, and God allowed us to open the school anyway. But um, we didn't know that a chai, having chai, was a bribe. So there we are. Some people here in Amos day, they got rich by taking bribes. And merchants, you know, people who buy and sell things, they used what were called false weights. Uh, still, if you go to a greengrocer now, they'll put it on a scale, won't they? They'll put a weight on one side, one kilogram or two kilograms, and they'll put some corn or some product on the other. And when it balances, <coughs> then they'll sell you two kilograms. So what they were actually doing, these merchants who were getting rich, they were putting a two kilogram weight on this side, but they'd fixed the scales, so they only had to put one kilogram of corn on. So they were charging you two, for two kilograms of corn, but actually you were only getting one kilogram. They fixed the scales, so they didn't have to sell so much corn, but they still got just as much money. And that's how they were getting rich. Merchants were taking, using false weights, the Bible says. And then uh, all kinds of other things were happening. The rich people got richer and the poor people got poorer. Nothing's really changed, has it? No. Uh, I'm not going to make a political statement about what's happening at the moment in our nation, but you all know exactly what I mean. It's going to be the poorer people in our nation who are going to be hit by the people who've got plenty of money to do just what they want and they won't be hit by the same things that the poorer people are. And the result of all this was that God wasn't pleased. You heard in, in our presentation earlier, Nathan, God was saying, you know, this is, this is wrong. It makes me unhappy. I'm not pleased with my people. Go and tell them, Amos. At the same time, these people did lots of religious things. Now, God's own people, they, were, they had a history of doing lots of religious things. Festivals, offerings of animals, all kinds of things. Sometimes they had to wear special clothes and wear them in a particular way. <coughs> they did lots of religious things. But actually, they paid little attention to God. Their religious behavior was a sham. Do you know what a sham is? It's something false, isn't it? That's right. Uh, it looks good, but it has no heart behind it. It's a cover for bad things that they were doing. And the leaders who were doing well themselves, they didn't care about the people who were in need or who were poor. They didn't care what happened to them, as long as they had plenty to live on. So God called this man Amos to bring this important message and warning. Seek good, not evil, that you may live. Then the Lord God Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Is that what you are doing? Are you seeking good and not evil or are you happy with evil and you're not really seeking good at all now God's love for every single one of us and you out there is unconditional he loves us whatever we've done whatever we're doing whatever we are yet to do <laughs> but his promises his promises are conditional his love is unconditional you can never say God doesn't love you his love is unconditional but his promises are conditional. 
And so what it says here through the prophet Amos, do you want to live and be right with God? Then the condition is seek good and not evil. Seek to do what is right before God and not be happy and content with what God does not like. And it says if you seek good and not evil, then God will really be with you. You should say, oh, amen. (laughs) You say God is with you, but only if you hate evil and you love good and you do what is right before God. And God tells Amos this message three times to the people in these few verses, just so they they get it, just so they get it. Now, every day we live vertically and we live horizontally. Did you know that? We live vertically because we're supposed to have a relationship with God, right? Now, he's not really up there. He's everywhere, but we kind of say he's up there because he's God and we're, we're not, okay? So we have a vertical relationship. We have to keep our love for God really strong. But also, we have a horizontal relationship. Some of you are sitting in family groups. You've got a father and a daughter. Uh, what else have we got? Husband and a wife. Husbands and wives. We've got brothers and sisters. Some of you might be neighbours. We've got people who we go to church with. So we have horizontal relationships. Now, God expects us to keep our relationship with him good, but also he expects us to be right with him in the way we treat one another and the way we are in the world. And we cannot claim that we have a great time with God if we're not living right with other people around us. Now, if you go back to the Ten Commandments, I'm not going to ask you to recite them all to me, but I don't know if you know, but the Ten Commandments fall into two groups. One group says that we are to love God with our whole hearts, and the other side of the Ten Commandments are about our relationships with the world and with other people. If you go home and look at the Ten Commandments, you'll see that. Two groups. One is about our relationship with God, and the other group is how we relate to the people around us and the world around us. And Jesus actually was asked once, which is the greatest command? And he actually summed the Ten Commandments up into two commandments, didn't he? He says, (laughs) love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbour as you love yourself. So get the relationship with God right, get the relationship right with others. Now, sometimes, especially grown-ups do this, so you children can listen, because if you ever spot it, you can always give them a a nudge and say, hang on a minute. Sometimes we divide life into two parts, right? And the two parts, and you're the dictionary here, Frederick, one, there are two posh words. One is sacred, and the other is secular. And let's see if you've got any idea about it. Frederick, what do you think sacred means? Something that is holy, yes, to do with God. and Religious beliefs, yes. What a, not to do with, absolutely. Let's give him a clap for that. I'll pay you later, okay. <laughs> no. That was a brilliant definition. Sacred is something holy to do with God, to do with religious things. Secular is something nothing to do with God. Now, lots of adults, they divide the world into the two parts. And you watch them sometimes. You can give them a little nudge. Uh, because they say, well, what does sacred mean? Well, it means we think that some things involve God and concern God. Going to church, you're all here today, so this is sacred, isn't it? Actually, this room is just the same as any other room in any other building, except that we're here worshipping God. It's not the room that's sacred, is it? It's our relationship with God. But um, anything to do with God and anything that concerns him, going to church, giving some offering, dressing respectfully on Sundays, you say, I've got my tie on today, because I'm preaching today, there's power in the tie, you know. But we come respectably. It's sacred. It's Sunday. It's God's day. Um, Occasionally we take communion. 
Uh, sometimes we have our children dedicated here or we think that if someone dies, it's got to be done in church. This is sacred, isn't it? We think that stuff involves God, therefore it's sacred. Now secular, as Frederick rightly points out, means that we think there's a lot of other stuff that really isn't God's business at all. And it doesn't really concern him. If Sunday is God's day, then Monday to Saturday, when we're not in church, we can do whatever suits us, can't we? Some of you know that your parents love Jesus and they've tried to bring you up in the Christian way. Now, I wonder what happens when you go off to school on Monday and I wonder what happens when you grow up or you go to university when they're not watching over you. How are you going to be then? That's interesting, isn't it? Um, If Sunday is God's day, then Monday to Saturday, when we're not in church, we can do whatever suits us. That's the way we think, isn't it? And that's how we often live as well. But that was what Amos was preaching against to God's people all those years ago. Because in God's eyes, everything is sacred. He made the world, everything in it. Therefore, everything is sacred. God's interested, concerned, involved, watching over everything in our lives. It's God's world and we belong to him. Everything is sacred to God. Everything we do is God's business. He's involved with us. We're accountable to him for everything. And in order to be blessed and to really live, we have to seek good, what God wants, and not evil. Everything we do should be honouring to God and give him glory. And I want to ask the question to you young ones, to you middle-aged ones, no, not going to point to anyone, and you slightly above the middle age bracket, are you one person on a Sunday at church? Or if you come to a religious meeting at the church or wherever, but a different person from Monday to Saturday? If someone gets to know you in church, they say, oh, it's... She's so polite and lovely. She says lots of good things about God. But have you seen her on a Tuesday? Or do you know I work with that person? She's horrible. That's because we divide the world into two parts. Sacred, this belongs to God. Secular, this is none of his business. But everything to God is important. And Amos preached, God's looking at everything we do. And everything belongs to God. And if you really want to live with God and have the benefits and blessings of being in relationship with him, then we have to seek good, what he wants, and not evil. Are you one person different when you go to school? Uh, Do you, for example, join in the bullying when there's somebody who's being bullied? Do Do you join in? Do you say, come on, join us, and we're going to pick on that person? Are you one of those people? Now, Frederick's saying no. I actually believe him because he's got a lovely heart. He's a transparent heart. He loves Jesus. It's a challenge, though, isn't it? If your friends tell you to do bad things, are you a different person when they, when they do that? You gave us some wonderful examples. When you go off to university, who hopes to go to university eventually? Yeah? Anyone else? Yeah? Okay. Another one at the back there. Quite a few have gone off just recently, and some of you are ready to go. Now, when you go to university, mum, dad, uncles, aunties, they're not going to go with you. Hey, that's going to be wonderful, isn't it? Free of anything they tell you you've got to do. You can do anything you like. And the only time you come home to see them is when you bring your washing home. And, <laughs> but you'll be free of their restraints. What are you going to be like when your mum and dad don't tell you what's right to do? Um, All of us in our homes, are we godly people or are we ungodly in our own homes? When we're at work, maybe you're a business person and you're in charge of people under you. Do you treat those people well? Do they appreciate appreciate you being a good boss? Or if you're under a boss and and you have to do as you're told, um, do you give good time or do you slip off an hour early every day when the boss is not there? Do you give him a good account of yourself in your work? In your marriage? Here's a tricky one, isn't it? Do our marriages reflect God living in our homes and our relationships? Um, 
What you do with your money is important. How you earn your money in the first place. You know, when the National Lottery started, lots of churches were very confused about the National Lottery. Because if you're a Baptist particularly, we were always taught you shouldn't be gambling. You should trust God for everything you need. And broadly speaking, that's true, isn't it? But then people were saying, but the church needs the money, you know. If people bring the money... To... And it's true, isn't it? I don't know how many of you do the National Lottery. I'm not going to come down on you if you do. But um, we don't actually ask people, well, where did you get your money from that you're giving to God? Some of you might have done it by fraudulent, defrauding the tax man. You know, <laughs> we don't know where the money comes from. And so the church was quite divided in the past about things like the National Lottery. Should we accept money that's got from gambling? Should we accept money that comes from defrauding the tax man or not paying VAT when we have the builder in? Would you like to pay by cash and save yourself 20%? Uh, it's very tempting, isn't it? But everything is sacred to God, every part of our lives. Seek good and not evil, then the Lord will be with you as you claim he is. You're here today, so I presume most of you claim that God is with you. Seek good and not evil, and then you will live. So Amos, Amos in chapter 3, verse 10 says, They do not know how to do right. In other words, God's own people at the time, they'd forgotten how to do what pleased God. They were so convinced that God loved them that it didn't really matter what they did. We've been looking in our Bible study about this, and it's a thing called cheap grace, where, yeah, well, Jesus has forgiven us on the cross, so it doesn't matter whether we go on doing bad stuff because he loves us. It's okay. And Amos says the people of his day, they'd forgotten how to be right with God and to do what pleased him. And so he's asking us, do you want to be right with God? Because there's no greater privilege or blessing than to have God on your side. Some of you really know that, don't you? Uh, I was at a nine-night uh, with, with my wife Catherine, uh, Patrick Sterling's nine-night uh, the other day, and a lovely testimony from Daphne, his wife, uh, saying that how she could not have gone through what she's gone through in her life, except that God was with her through those times. It was a lovely testimony, even though she was speaking it through sadness at the loss of her husband. There's no greater privilege than knowing you're right with God and he's with you. Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not be afraid, even if the earth is shaken. What a wonderful privilege. I wonder if the people of uh, La Palma are in a good relationship with God. Their world has been physically shaken, hasn't it? Even now as we speak, lava is coming down the side of a volcano. You prayed for those people. Some of them have already lost their houses. It's a terrible situation. I wonder how many of them know that God is with them and that, that will see, he will see them through. Psalm 23, he gives me new strength, he guides me in the right paths, and even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid, Lord, for you are with me. How many of you know that's true for you? Yes. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8, if God is for us, who could be against us? Nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. His wisdom to guide us, his power to protect us. I can lie down, go off to sleep knowing he's washing over me. We sang that earlier, didn't we? He's my, my shield, my protector. Um, I can trust him forever. His wisdom to guide us, his power to protect us, his love to comfort us, his holiness to surround us. This is life as God intended us to live it. But we cannot love evil and expect the blessing of God. If you seek good and not evil, then God will be with you as you claim he is. And this word calls for a response, doesn't it? What must I do differently from now on? Because we've heard the words of God through Amos to us today. What must I change so that I will not be an obstacle to God's mercy and blessing? 
Is it the way I treat my parents? Is it the way you parents treat your children? Is it the way you treat your husband or your wife or something that happens in your workplace or the way you use your money? What's got to change? Now we've heard, in our story that we heard wonderfully acted out earlier, God gave the message to Amos. Amos gave the message to the people. Some of them changed what they were doing. Some of them weren't interested and carried on doing the stuff God didn't want them to do. We need to respond. So it would be good if we could just stand together for a moment. If you have to sit down, you've got a baby there, that's okay, you can stay sitting down. I'm just going to say, when I say these words, to honour you, Lord, all right, have you got that, to honour you, Lord, will you respond only if you mean it, I want to be the best that I can be. Okay, so I will try it out. To honour you, Lord, I want to be the best that I can be. Okay. Only say it if you mean it. In my school, to honour you, Lord. That's right. In my home, to honour you, Lord, I want to be the best that I can be. In my marriage, to honour you, Lord, I want to be the best that I can be. In my workplace, to honour you, Lord, I want to be the best that I can be. In my business affairs, to honour you, Lord, I want to be the best that I can be. In the way I get and use my money, to honour you, Lord, I want to be the best that I can be. In everything I do to honour you, Lord, I want to be the best that I can be. Heavenly Father, we pray that if we have spoken those words, that you will send your Holy Spirit to help us, because on our own, we're not inclined to do the right things. But your promise is that when we seek you and seek to do what is right with you and not evil, and not live easily with evil, then you will be with us as we claim already that you are. Lord, may you send your Holy Spirit to help us. May we live this week in a way that honours and glorifies you, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please sit down. And we're going to close now by listening to the blessing that we normally pronounce. It's going to be sung out for us by children from across the world, and uh, after that, uh, we'll say goodbye to one another and we'll go out into the world Monday to Saturday because everything is sacred to God. <laughs>